From providing a new view to fixing the deep and detailed economy, new road tools, tree tools, and more, here are eight brilliant mods that you can try right now in City Skylines 2 and how to play and install them. There'll be time cards below. Let's not muck about, let's go. Starting us off with a bang, one of my personal favorites, Extended Road Upgrades by Staffs. It's also worth noting one of the most popular mods already downloaded for City Skylines 2, and it adds four key and beautiful, pun intended, functions to the road network upgrades inside of City Skylines 2. Not only key roads, but also elevated roads, retaining walls, and finally tunnels are added as extra options in and along sort of the sound barriers, the curbside grass that may already be there. These four new tools, which it's important to note don't just have to be applied to roads, like you can see me doing here, trying to mess with some of City Skylines, what it has to be said is kind of rough building in and around any kind of elevated space. And goodness knows, if I tried to put some zoning there, it would be even worse. But it's important to note that it, this mod isn't just for those trouble areas. You can upgrade any old road you like, or indeed any new road. Maybe creating some overground tunnels to plant trees on top of in your cities, or maybe again returning to some of those awkward road functions to try and just tidy them up a little bit. Uh, tram tracks, public transport roads, subway tracks, pedestrian paths, you name it, this mod will help to fix it, but probably most important, at least in my opinion, the key upgrade, if you will, or quay if you're that way inclined. This one is pretty big. Uh, waterfronts and city skylines too don't look very good, uh, it's heavily assisted, it's important to note, by the terraforming tools, or at the very least, the road upgrade tools, to try and position the key road just right, so that you get that waterfront effect that you've been probably vying for and unlikely to achieve in the base game of City Skylines 2. I would highly recommend this fairly simple but drastic quality of life mod, but it is not alone. We've got seven more to get through, so let's do just that. And coming in second, in no particular order, is Ducks in a Row by Cities 2 Modding, a very apt name. But what is a very powerful modding tool? It basically enables your city building experience and crucially your tree and plop placing options to be much better than they could ever be inside of the base game. I like to focus on the tree options because I think that adding trees like this particularly, by the way, mature trees by using the Alt and A hotkey option. You can also use the up and down arrows on your keyboard to adjust the distance between trees as you use the obviously new line tool. There's also a circle tool available. Uh, those two are toggled by Alt X. Once we bring it all together, as you can see, it enables Really what is a much better placement option, not just to fight that impending RSI in my fingertips, it just makes the game much more enjoyable to play. Now it doesn't have the most uh, perhaps advanced curve functions yet, so you kind of have to use the straight line tool, or as I mentioned the circular tool which will create a perfect circle of trees to any uh, radii that you might choose. I think fundamentally having the mature trees option saves a huge amount of time and waiting inside of the simulation and being able to place things much closer together is another key function here as well, with a lot of background optimization taking place inside of the mod for our pleasure. Moving through to option number three, a quickie but a goodie, City Monitor by Captain of Coit, another great name on our list. Now, located up in the top left hand side in our backpack, you'll see this option, which basically pulls a lot of the performance monitoring options inside of each individual tab into one place. So, you've got your electricity, your water availability, sewage, landfill, health, cemetery, fire, all of the city services. You can of course use the settings tab to turn them off or on so you can monitor exactly the ones that you're perhaps most interested in, like education, because it's very important inside of this game. And that's it for this fairly simple but very useful UI mod inside of Cities 2. And briefly, before we move on to a big mod, I'd like to beg you to subscribe, to pad my ego and incentivize me to make more videos just like this one. We are so close to a big milestone. Fourth on my list, Economy Fixer. Getting down and dirty, thanks to TDW. This one adds a bulldoze function that you might be familiar with, adding an extra layer to destroyed buildings, which you can actually, if you'd like, turn completely on or off inside of the options functions for this mod, where it really shines. Not in these bulldozing options necessarily, 
Though, as I say, you can choose to turn them on and off, and they will have an impact on the economy and these. But more importantly, on these four difficulty settings easy, medium, hard, and good luck. Now, these four settings, in combination with the mod, rework a lot. Uh, the subsidies formula in particular has been completely reworked. You get money at the start and lose subsidies the larger your city becomes. You also receive less money for a lower period of time on the higher difficulty settings, gradually becoming more and more difficult. And as you can see on easy, and granted a pretty overinflated city, my economy is struggling. If I swap it to good luck though, you'll see that my what was previously about 4 million bucks in income has now dropped significantly and the expenses have shot up. There is no way now that this city could be affordable. I might have to get rid of my Ferris wheel. And as you can see in the detail, including those demolition uh, costs, it adds quite a bit and takes away a lot from services and service trade as well in particular. And if that wasn't enough, it rebalances the milestone rewards too. Next up, a slightly lighter entry at number five, it's a 529 Tiles Light by Algernon. There are many other versions or a couple of other versions of this mod like others inside of this list, but this is the one that I've selected for its simplicity. What does it do? Well, obviously when you spawn in, you have all 529 tiles available to you and that's it. It doesn't mess with anything else. You can install this mod, use it, and then uninstall it as well. By the way, it's not one of those difficult ones that becomes sort of bound to a save file like some of the other intricate ones may be. You also, inside of the options menu, have some essentially sort of almost like difficulty sliders here. You can start with just 88 tiles if you'd like, or you can choose to mess with how extra tiles are allocated throughout the game, slightly redistributing them and allowing you to basically unlock them easier and earlier, giving you much more variety where you want to start, where you want to build. Again, a very simple mod and a light version of another but I think it's just an easy win. The sixth entry on my list is another easy win. School Capacity Balancer by Wazy Wear. This one jumps into three specific things. The biggest one being elementary schools, which you just need a million of at the moment in the base game of City Skylines 2. Uh, you may choose to continue to place more if the 3000 capacity per elementary school just isn't enough for you or of course to provide the extra effect. Maybe you have different areas in a city, you don't want people to be traveling very far, or maybe you want the extra health and wellness that's generated by the city service. But fundamentally, you don't need to place anywhere near as many with their extinction wing capacity and base capacity being doubled alongside their upkeep. Uh, college extinction wing capacity and upkeep have also been doubled and the university capacity and upkeep increased by 25%, a well needed upgrade to cities too. And eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed number seven already. Extended tooltip again, thanks to the Cities 2 modding community. This one is another really nice quality of life change. As you can see, hovering over residential buildings or commercial buildings will display their level, their costs, and more. And you can specifically finesse the kinds of things you'd like to see or not see inside of the uh, options menu. Again, it's located up in the top left inside of our backpack where the city modding options were also located. Hovering over things now provides all of the information that you might need. Getting a quick glance as to whether the service is actually functioning and how efficiently it's doing. Also, it's employees. Are people actually getting here? Are they educated enough? What about maintenance on parks and other services? That is delivered. And it stretches further abroad too with some fun stats like road length and condition and upkeep cost perhaps more importantly here for me. And likewise, industry, some very useful stuff here around city building levels. But again, leaning into that economic information. What resources do they require? What kinds of things should I be building in my city to maybe avoid imports or exports? It's a beautiful and simple little mod. Maybe we might even be nosing into Kendrick Noble, who's uneducated and somewhat unhappy, or Jean Paxton, very happy in her educated life. And if you like being nosy or maybe playing GTA inside of City Skylines 2, the first person camera yet again brought to us by the City Stoop modding community might just be the mod for you. This one is really fun to play around with inside of the simulation. Control F will delve deep into the mod itself and basically assign first person mode to you. You can then use right mouse button to move around and kind of zap and lock on to different objects in a very sort of geo guesser kind of way 
Uh, my favorite way to do it though, using left shift here or there to increase movement speed, was to really personify myself, or in this case, not so much. Living the life of a, <laughs> perhaps a lost mutt in City Skylines 2. There are many of them, though this one, a very good boy. Uh, or alternatively, if you don't feel like messing around as a dog, there are plenty of other things you could do, like taking photos inside of the photo mode, for example, where granted some of these camera options, like the different uh, focal lengths and all that kind of stuff are already available, but you can't quite get that lived-in experience that this mod provides unless you use first-person mode. A very new, unique, and realistic perspective, perhaps, of your city if not slightly glitchy in and around the edges. And that, I think, brings us to the end of the video and also some very important housekeeping. I have three things that you'll probably want to know. Uh, first and foremost, mods are not officially in the game, of course. There is no official modding support. At the time of recording this video, we're expecting it by mid-2024. That means I'm using a third-party tool, and with that comes its own risks. So use and download these at your own risk. They are all very much in a kind of beta process, and some of them may or may not mess with save files. I found generally they all worked incredibly well, didn't really mess with save files, and I found very few glitches across the board. I used the Thunderstore app. Other modding services are definitely available, and so I'd encourage you to check them out if, if you're curious and if you're wanting to really delve into this kind of thing. But for me, it was a very easy tool to use. I just used their mod manager with a couple of plugins that most things requires, like the Hook UI and Weapon X or everything installed very easily. Good luck in beautifying your cities. I'll see you next time.